Okay, so uh, you can see here, this is a photo of the motif I was looking at. And um, I went ahead and started the demo just a little bit into the painting. Um, so this painting began with uh, a painting that didn't work out. I went ahead and covered it with a neutral gray oil paint. Um, and while the paint was still wet, started this, this new painting. So this is a little bit of a different approach um, than I always do, but I mean, I don't really do anything the same way exactly. Because uh, painting for me is, is definitely a sort of listening process where I have a sort of an idea as to what I want to do and then I try and pay attention to what I'm looking at and s sort of look for guidance from the motif um, and my own sort of gut feeling in order to make decisions as far as how the painting proceeds. So, yeah, so I went ahead and started this painting with the, the wet gray ground color and then made the sky first. I, I like the idea of painting a shape that is far th farther away or the farthest away. It's this sort of idea of stacking where um, if I paint the piece of color that is farthest away um, first, then the trees can be painted on, on top of the sky and that gives sort of an illusion of depth, sort of like a very shallow relief. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and put in the sky and then, and as I was putting in the sky, I was thinking a lot about that special line between sky and trees or any sort of horizon line um, and trying to see how in my motif that line has a, a special specificity to it. Um, so I was paying attention to that. I, I really liked this area of pointy pine trees that's kind of towards the middle of the painting. It kind of had a zigzag feeling to it. And then at the end of the pointy pine trees on the left-hand side, the sky sort of dips down into this little keyhole. And on an abstract level, that just really appealed to me. Um, so I think that's partly why I was attracted to this motif. Um, I also really loved how, how it looks outside when it's gray and overcast and it's sort of evening. I think I made this painting in October. It was one of those unseasonably warm days in October. Um, so the green of the foliage is not that same sort of brilliant green that you see in July, but it's it's not quite uh, orange autumny either. It's kind of in between. My favorite color is green, <laughs> for sure, um, and I love the idea of seeing a green color and then forgetting that it's green and finding its specific sort of place um, in the color wheel or really outside of the color wheel in a way. Um, I studied with Israel Hirschberg maybe five years ago and one of the things he said was uh, that the visual curl world is full of nameless colors. Um, and so my approach to color mixing in many ways is to see that it's per perhaps a color is green, say to myself, okay, it's green, and then forget it and focus mainly on value, having the correct lightness or darkness, um, the correct sort of weight to the color mixed. And then I see where that value wants to lean. It might lean towards green, and then it might lean a little bit towards orange, a little bit towards purple. Um, and it's sort of this balancing act until the color kind of clicks into place 
um, and belongs with all of the other colors in the picture so that the picture will feel like a cohesive, unified, all part of the same world. Um, part of the experiment in this painting, and you can see the, the clip just skipped ahead a bit. There wasn't time um, to put the entire demo into this, this video. Um, so you saw the beginning part, and now you can see this is kind of how I finished up the painting. I've, I've got the sky and then the zigzag pine trees in the middle, and then there's this house on the left-hand side. I really simplified the house, just gave it the three planes, um, the top of the roof uh, that reflects the sky, the side of the building that faces the viewer, and then the side of the building that faces um, to the right. And then uh, I sort of like to think of my paintings as a play in a way, like a, like a theatrical play where um, there, there's a, a number of characters that are interacting with each other. And so the characters in this play so far, we've got the sky and the zigzag trees and we've got the um, different greens. We've got this tree on the right hand side that's sort of leaning into the middle. Um, and then these slightly lighter trees on the left-hand side above the, uh, the house. And then we have the ground is another player, and the road is, is another one. Um, I really love looking at different shapes on the ground and mixing up the same color so that they have a, a sameness to them, and then adjusting that color just a tiny bit so that they feel like the same, but they're just a little bit different. Um, so they belong in the same world, but they're located in a slightly different space within that world. Um, so yeah, this painting kind of came together relatively quickly. Um, and I think I remember when I was making it, I was surprised that it came together quickly and I was enjoying it and I didn't really want it to end. Uh, and so I tried to add some more players, like you can see here, um, what just happened is I, there are two bushes and I just love the shapes of the bushes. They're sort of like little diamond shapes. So I put those in and then realized that those two shapes uh, competed with all of the other characters in a way that wasn't beneficial to the overall idea. So I, I took them out again. Um, and so now I'm kind of looking at the painting and seeing looking at the painting, looking at the motif, and um, kind of asking both entities um, w what is needed. And sometimes that takes um, a fair amount of looking and listening before taking action. Um, I know that when I did make the road color, I was thinking about how the world the visual world can be a kind of a mirror where everything sort of reflects each other. Um, and so the, the road, I sort of saw, see that as a mirror to the sky. So there's going to, I knew there would be a lot of the sky color in the road color. So I think I went ahead and mixed up the sky color on my palette. Um, I think for this painting, I just mixed with my brushes, which is a much faster process than some of my other paintings. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and mixed up the sky color and then um, kind of asked myself, okay, well, it's like the sky color, but it's just a little bit different. So how is it different? And I think I found that that sky color needed to be changed in the sense that it was just a little bit darker than the sky. Um, it had a little bit of purple in it because that tarmac is kind of a, a purpley color but then it also had um, some warmth of the sun in it even though it was an overcast day I found I could still kind of see an orangey glow to the light um, the light shining on on all of the objects I saw and so it was a sort of balance between a, a white sky color and then some purple and some orange and yellow um, and it's sort of a balance beam in a way, kind of going back and forth until it felt um, just just right. I guess I did leave out one other character on the on the right hand side of the painting. There is another 
a little house. Um, and I think that sort of lighter color at the end plays. Well, okay, that's the end of the demo. Anyways, um, thank you for listening. And um, that's it. Bye.